walking and I've got my three-year-old in the backseat of the car and we're doing errands. And I find it very special because I'm the working parent. It's my stay-at-home husband that usually is carting her around. And I'm looking at her and I'm just thinking, she's so adorable. And just as I'm thinking that, the car in front of me, the stoplight, hits their brakes and I have to hit mine really fast. And my daughter says, fucking idiot. I'm like, what? What? What the, oh. Oh, my husband happens to be half Italian and half German. So he's got a little bit of road rage that I have to deal with. I get home, I let Quincy out of the car. I walk up to her dad in the garage and I say, hey, you fucking pirate. Uh, we've got a parrot in the back seat, and she's listening to everything that we say and she is going to have a filthy mouth if we don't get in front of this. All right, what are we gonna fucking do about it? I'm like, okay, can we just try? Can we try? Okay, we're gonna do a swear jar, right? For every time one of us swears, me, you, her, 25 cents goes into the jar. It's like, all right, fine. And it's going pretty well. It's going pretty well. But about five years later, Quincy now has a little sister, Maisie, and she's watching yet another round of Dora the Explorer, the most annoying television show on TV. It's about a little girl with a backpack and she's got a best friend that's a monkey. And they're always talking to this map and they're always saying, swipe or no swipe, swipe or no swipe. Ugh. Quincy gets up walks to her room, comes out, flips a quarter to her dad and says, Dora is an asshole. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Boom. I'm going to remove the pen. Now I'm going to do something here that is, um, I'm going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to share with you things I don't know about Zoom. I know that's really boring, but um, just because is pinning different than spotlighting? Someone unmute yourself and tell me real quick. Pinning pins it for you. Yeah. Not for everybody. Yeah, didn't do anything right. for us. Yeah, we don't right. see the So I should, uh, thank you very much, Jeremy. So I will spotlight moving forward. I believe that was not the way to do it, what I just did there. Uh, cool. Good job, Melissa. We're going to roll through these rather quickly, all right? Remember, after the first four, voting. Here we go. Our second storyteller, Florida. AKA badass, his name is Walt. Unmute yourself and I will spotlight you, sir. Take your time. Uh, well, it's May 21st, 1978. And my assignment this day, I'm a newspaper reporter. I've got to go to the Civic Center and interview Dolly Parton. Yes, that Dolly Parton. Now, I'm not a country music fan, and I'm not a Dolly Parton fan. I think of her at this point as sort of a country Barbie doll. I'm not that familiar with her, but I go to the Civic Center, and her motorhome is parked out back, and I go inside the motorhome. It's, usually there's a publicist, but no, it's just Dolly and me, and she's got on a green house coat, and she's folded over in front of those <laughs> mountains of Jupiter, those two most famous breasts in America at the moment. And I'm a professional journalist. I'm not going to stare at these. I look at the ceiling. I look at the, I look at the wall. I look at Dolly's magnificent wig. And I look at her face and I'm not going to stare at her cleavage. And Dolly smiles at me. She says, you're nervous, honey, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and look at them. Everybody else <laughs> does. That's what they're there for. And she breaks the ice. And I start, well, I can start warming up to Dolly. And then Dolly tells me, that everywhere she goes, she's got the judge a look-alike contest. Later this day, she's look, doing look-alike contests all over the country. What do you think about this? Well, I see these girls and they got big boobs, big hair and big butts. And I, I think, God, that's awful. Do I look that bad? I go home and look in the mirror. Well, maybe I do. And from that moment on, I was a Dolly Parton fan. Boom. Good job, Walt. Love Dolly. <laughs> cool so we have two tellers here and uh they are both i believe under time which is the goal that's the goal under time and obviously whatever else you need to do to get the w our third storyteller of this first second we're rolling we got a lot of tellers so uh if i uh, you know do what i often do which is just talk a lot it'll take like nine hours and people be like i can't do this anymore with you sean uh, Daryl, you are up next, bro. I hope that you are prepared because you're a late comer and I have to find you. 
Seriously. Daryl <laughs> Purpose, great name. Let me spotlight you, sir. Thank and you, Eddie. Whenever you're ready, you have got 99 seconds maximum. Cool? All right. Cool. So last Sunday, I was in Wyoming somewhere. It was the middle of the night. There was a snowstorm. Wind was blowing. I was in a parking area. I could see 18 wheelers, but nothing else. And I was trying to sleep in the back of my Subaru Forester. Um, but I had gotten a couple things wrong. I was trying to drive from Colorado to Portland. I thought it was a thousand miles, but it was 1,200 miles. And I thought I used, I owned, still owned a big SUV, but I owned a small SUV. So I had to put my knees to my, uh, my chest. I also packed a freezer bag full of frozen blueberries and marinating beef liver. And it had turned over. And all of a sudden I realized in the darkness and in the cold that my pillow, my blankets were wet because the freezer bag had turned over. I got into the front seat. I tried to get some sleep. I got three hours of sleep. I, I woke up at 1.30 and I thought, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty fresh here. And I realized, I thought I had driven 250 miles, but I realized I'd actually driven 350 miles. And I thought, you know, uh, I'm going to do this. And I, I hit the road. I called my cousin Scott because uh, we had scheduled a, a, a Zoom funeral for his mother my aunt uh and it looked like i wasn't going to be able to get it and he said just put your phone up there you got to say a few words i'm like, okay so i began to drive 1 30 a.m wyoming we had a good meeting of the family and i arrived in portland at 6 30 p.m breaking all records thank you very much oh <laughs> Daryl, but where? Thanks, man. That was quick. That was arguably even unfair, but it is what it is. It's the names go into the hat from Peru, and you don't know which one's going to come out. Uh, where are you, by the way, Daryl? I'm in Colorado, Nederland, Colorado. Nice. Looks like Colorado. Yeah. There's a, well, there's a Colorado feel to what I see there. Okay. Sounds, okay. Sounds good. You're getting a little <laughs> nauseous, so we have to move on. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, good. So we have had. Three tellers. This is going to be our last one of section one. I'm going to put the four names up. Everybody's going to get a vote other than three calls. Man, we've got newcomers coming out of the hat. Where are you, Nancy? Slam Nan. Hang on, take your time. I've got to spotlight you. I have a great Dane that is barking. Okay. All right, so should we repick? It's fine either way. I don't want you to be in danger. No, I'll go. Okay. That's a gamer. That's a gamer. All right. I'm ready when you are. So it's 1985, South Suburbs of Chicago, Evergreen Park to be exact. Central Junior High lip sync contest. We're all standing in line. We'd been practicing for weeks. There was the Beach Boys made up of Carlotta, Dawn, Jennifer. There was Prince, I Would Die For You. The only black girl in the school was playing Prince. Then there was me. And I go into the room, door shuts. It's all of my favorite teachers. Mr. Booth, who was the science teacher, overweight man with the mustache. Mrs. Dwyer, who was my gym teacher. Mrs. Gunther, my math teacher. All the teachers I have to see the next day. The song begins. I'm the skinny little girl, shortest in the class, hadn't yet hit puberty. And the song I'm about to sing is like a virgin touched for the very first time. Wow. I see Mr. Booth let out a little grin. The room is silent. Oh, that'll be enough, Miss Herbert. Thank you very much. And Mrs. Dwyer escorts me to the door. And there's a long pause. And it wasn't until recently, and I mean a couple of years ago, that it dawned on me that why that there was such a long pause because I was still a virgin and not understanding what a virgin was, what the big deal was. That's all I got. <laughs> nice. Great job, Nancy. Wait, and, and, uh, and your great Dane settled down at the right time. He did. It seems. Good job. All right, so here's what I need from Steph. Steph's gonna message me right now if somebody went over 
That means their name will not be one of the four names you'll see in the poll. Other than that, you're just going to choose your favorite. Uh, we will not reveal who wins until the end of uh, round one. But first, Mary. Yes. Would you please summarize our storytellers and their stories? Of course. Thank we you. have Melissa, whose daughter flipped a 25 cent piece just to make sure to call Dora an asshole. Walt, who uh, is a journalist who met Dolly Parton and became a fan after he saw her in her greenhouse coat. Daryl, who drove 1,200 miles, 1,000 miles, maybe 350 miles, I'm not sure, from Colorado to Portland in record time. And Nancy, who channeled her in a Madonna in 1985 for the, the lip sync contest. Perfect. All right. Here's the moment of truth. I've got a poll. We are going to launch this effing poll. If you were here for one of the other slams, and I know you don't care. Uh, yes, if you came late, there's a couple of people. I would prefer if you didn't vote. Everyone gets to vote. That includes the storytellers, including the ones that just told. I assume you'll vote for yourself. I think if you're like someone else wowed you that much that you want to give that away, do it. I mean, no, cool. don't do that. I, don't do that. Vote for you yourself. Just say the names one more time. Just yeah, I'm going to put you. Oh. Sharon, it's going to be a poll that I'm putting up right now. You don't have to get, send Mary anything. All right. Ooh. The poll is up. I believe I gave you a little description. Oh my God. How did I not, how did I not find this polling earlier? This is fan freaking tastic. It's I lost my job guys. It's awful. Did someone complain? I'm just oh wondering. God. Now remember <laughs> after these, after all the first round, Mary has an additional vote. So we'll have five because we have five sections plus potentially Mary and Steph. That's a lot. It's all good. Here we go. Everyone done? I'll give you five more seconds. We have four sections, Sean, plus Mary and Steph. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, what? Sorry. You're right. I was, I was spacing out. No problem. We, okay, we're cool. We're cool, Our right? math challenge, <laughs> Richard pointed out that we have uh, four sections and not five. Thank you, Richard. This one is done. No announcements yet. We shall wait. Here we go. Poll is over. What's that? Ah. Sorry. Because, you know, this is, we you know, story, surprise, basic stuff. I need to know if I can start drinking or not. <laughs> start drinking. I'm giving you permission. How are you taking over my screen is what I want to know. All right. Our uh, first teller of section number two. By the way, those four stories, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Steph, great job timekeeping. Mary, great job summarizing. As usual. A fucking good team. Everybody was uh, so perfectly under time. Perfectly. This crew isn't playing, I'll tell you. Here we go. Amazing. Our uh, next storyteller, live from New York City. Andrea, I'm going to, here we go. Take your time. I come home from rehearsal early to find the house dark. The bedroom lights on, the door is closed. Put my hand on the bedroom door handle. It's being held closed from the inside. It's November, 1998. I'm living in Portland, Oregon. I'm living out my bohemian fantasy. A year earlier, I had hitchhiked across Ireland, I'd hopped a freight train, and I eloped to the guy I'd been with since I was a college freshman, Wayne. We drove to Las Vegas in a snowstorm and got married by Elvis impersonator. Now, he was in the Coast Guard, and he only came home once a month, so it made sense for me to continue living with roommates. Now, when he came home, he'd have thought I wanted to be home alone with him, private romantic time together, but no, it was always me, Wayne, and my best friend, Aaron. I was elated. I thought it was great. It was so bohemian. It was so free. The three of us together, just friends, of course. But I never dreamed anything could, you know, happen between a man and a woman. I just loved them both. We would have dinner together. We'd go to bars together. I trusted them completely. We even talked about buying a house together, a garden and a dog. So naive. I thought they were doing it just for me. Even when I let her, you know, kiss him for the first time. Even when I let her take her clothes off and get in bed with us, purely platonic, 
I thought it was just for me. Hand, door handle. Wayne, why is why can't I open the door? They open the door. There they are, naked, bed together, clothes on the floor, looking shocked. And me looking shocked. Not even mad, just shocked. Wayne, Aaron, what happened? I trusted you. Boom. Good job, Andrea. Thank you. Nice. Huh. All right, cool. Good, good, good. Steph, how's that timekeeping thing we've tried? Uh, this is the first time we've tried this. So like stressful. It's are horrible. you feeling stressed out? It's very stressful. Okay. Are, is anyone watching Steph get stressed out? And is that stressing you out that she's getting stressed out? <laughs> you, got, you got to represent. You got I'm to fake it. I'm working. I'm going to keep smiling. I'm going to smile through it. Everybody's doing really, really well, though. Everyone's I'm, doing really I'm well. Good. I'm as good. You're doing, and you're doing really well. Thank you. And you and Mary are wearing purple. So, and I'm gray, and it coordinates. Our second storyteller of this section, sixth overall. And I realized, by the way, again, my math issues, I said that the uh, fifth, the five storytellers would go in the middle, but there is no middle. They'll be the last one to go. I don't know if I said that. They'll be the last one to go. I, Richard, I, you know that I struggle with this shit. I, if not, I'd be in fucking Vegas being rich too. Here we go. <laughs> um, the last section of round one will be the five. Sorry. What am I going to tell you? Uh, another newbie. I got to find you. I don't know you. Joanna, where are you? We'll give Joanna like 15 seconds. I am. I'm here. Oh, oh, where's my there you are. I see you. Hey there. Uh, it's good to meet you. We'll, 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 we'll exchange pleasantries after. Break a leg. Okay. My first time through security, my mobile boarding pass doesn't work, so I have to go back and get a paper, paper pass. My second time through security, the TSA guy pulls my bag aside. He has to inspect it. He digs around inside and he pulls out my glass dildo. He gives me a look, he looks at the dildo, puts it back and zips it up. I go to my terminal, I sit down to get breakfast and I realize I've left my laptop at security. So I wolf down my breakfast, leave, go back out to the airport through security for the third time. My bag gets pulled aside, he figures around in my bag, pulls out my glass dildo, <laughs> gives me a look, puts it back in and I say, I'm here to get my laptop, I left my laptop. And he says, it's in Lost and Found, we just took it to Lost and Found. And I'm like, where's Lost and Found? He says, it's on the other end of the airport. I say, I don't have time to go to the other end of the airport and get my laptop. In that moment, an alarm goes off on my phone. It says, it's fun to be me. That's my every morning, 10 a.m. alarm. So I'm like, okay, here we go. So I race through the airport, I get my laptop. I go through security for a fourth time. This time it's a woman, she pulls aside my bag. She sees it on the screen. She says, I know what that is. She goes in she pulls out my glass dildo and she says, have fun girl. Puts it back in, I zip up my bag. I race to my gate, I race to my gate. I get there, nobody is at the gate. And a guy comes out, he sees me, he says, Bo he says Boston, I say Boston. He turns around, he says, one more. I race onto the plane. I sit down moments before they close the door. And I say, it's fun to be me. What? <laughs> What the hell just happened here? Good job. Shoot, I went over time. Uh, uh, didn't go over time. I don't know if you timed yourself. Our official no. timekeeper decides that. You were not totally not over time. If I did this distract you, is this distracting? Because this is oh. wrap it up. Oh, let's wrap it up. So, okay. uh, so. Joanna, you might you weren't here in the very beginning because you you came in late. Um, or you know, uh uh. Yeah, obviously now you know. So we figured 80 seconds would be enough of a cushion. So that okay, we... okay. So I apologize like for that. I know you might have rushed your ending a little bit, but good job. Sorry. It's... If she has a few more seconds, she could tell for a few more seconds. <laughs> yeah, it's probably not going to work. If you don't want the sign, if you don't want the sign, you don't have to have the sign if it's just too distracting. Right? Don't you think, Sean? I, I think if somebody actively doesn't want it and they say that sure no problem yeah i don't think it makes much of a difference because you're not like flashing something or it's not like loud strobe or whatever all right we'll work it out we'll work the kinks out steph your teeth are looking very good this evening <laughs> right, really? i mean i think purple. we can all agree it's a purple coordination our third storyteller of section of section two god the numbers man oh from north carolina 
Sharon Eisner. Break a leg, Sharon. Let me find you and spotlight you. Hang on one sec. There you are. <clears throat> I often get things wrong, names, places, words, and usually it doesn't affect reality that much. Um, like the time I was really excited when Weird Al Yankovic ran for Congress and he got in and everything was good and then he had to quit. And it turned out, I found out that Weird Al Yankovic is not the same person as Al Franken. Nobody was hurt. It's all good. <laughs> And then, um, you know, when I was in sixth grade, I remember my teacher drove this car that had such an embarrassing name. Oh my God, I don't know much about cars, but I think I might've been the only sixth grader who knew that it was not cool to drive a vulva. What the fuck is that, right? So I eventually found out, you know, not a vulva, but the one time when it really affected my reality was when I was little, about nine. And... <sighs> it was very apparent that Santa Barbara, California was on the brink of a Holocaust um, because they were treating people unequally and unfairly. Um, and just like the Jews had to wear yellow stars in Germany, there were yellow signs in Santa Barbara, California, basically saying, we don't care about anybody's religion. We don't care about Catholics, about Methodists, about Jews. We only care about Presbyterians. And I was so angry. I felt like, why isn't anyone complaining? Why isn't anyone doing anything? I was such a self-righteous little bunny and I wanted things to be fair. And then I found out that Presbyterian and pedestrian are not the same word. Nice. Good job, Sharon. Now, uh, historically people say boom after their story because I might inadvertently start talking when you're not done. So you don't have to say that, but uh, just so great job. Good job. Everyone's doing great. Um, yeah. It's a common mistake, is it? Is it not? Oh, no. All right. Fourth teller of section two. Then the poll comes out again. A lot of polling. Everybody gets to vote. And uh, tellers, whether you've told, uh, even if you told already, it's a lot of love in the chat, so check it out. I know sometimes when I tell a story, I think I could have done better, and I feel very self-conscious. So maybe someone's chat might make you feel good if you're feeling that way. If you're feeling that way. I think you're doing remarkable, all of you. Uh, here we go. Next storyteller. I believe she's in upstate New York somewhere. Fatima. Let me find you, Fatima. I apologize if my pronunciation Ooh. isn't good. Where are you? Here it's you really unfortunate that this is my first time and I'm in the same group as the glass dildo lady. I could not agree more. Yeah. Okay. So when I moved to my apartment a few years ago, I didn't own any furniture and I also didn't have any money. So naturally I turned to Craigslist. I found this gigantic wicker dresser that had an iron frame, but I drove a tiny little Honda. So I needed someone to help me move it. I called up my brother Humvee and he has a van. He's also really temperamental and kind of an asshole. And he showed up sleep deprived from having pulled an all nighter. Frankie the whole time was rushing me and clearly didn't want to be there. So I turn to say goodbye to the couple that we're buying this dresser from, and I hear this loud glass shattering noise behind me, and I turn around, and there's just glass everywhere, and apparently he has slammed the trunk of his van closed without checking to see if it, the dresser is clear and has shattered his entire black windshield. So after a lot of just like bitching and complaining and cursing, he, you know, cleans up the glass, we leave, I say goodbye to the white couple awkwardly standing nearby staring at us. We go to my place and we quickly realize that it's not happening. We're not going to be able to get this giant ass thing up three flights of stairs into my apartment. So we called up my brother, AJ, to ask for help. AJ is also temperamental, but in addition to being temperamental, he's also unreliable. So we just stood around waiting for him for a while. You know, me and Humvee in the middle of the sidewalk with the dresser the size of a fucking industrial fridge, blocking the sidewalk, blocking the entrance to the apartment. We wait around for a while. AJ does not pick up his phone. I ended up calling a couple of my friends and they showed up in 15 minutes flat. They helped me move the thing in in 15 minutes flat. And AJ did eventually show up hours late. And that's the day that I learned not to ask my family for help. Uh, boom, question mark? Boom. Yeah. 
Fantastic, Fatima. Thank you. I like the sepia tones that you're filtering your uh, video through as well. It looks very interesting. Good job. It's, okay. Uh, so uh, Steph's going to message me and let me know if anyone was over while she's doing that. Uh, our lovely Mary in uh, uh, near Boston is going to summarize those four great storytellers. I can do that. So Andrea uh, was living Bohemian lifestyle until Aaron and Wayne ruined everything. I, really, Joanna, all I have to say is glass dildo. That's all I have to say. That's yeah. you all know that story. Sharon, names, Presbyterian, pedestrian, something like that. And Fatima, of course, you learn not to ask family to help with moving. All right, so those four. All right, cool. I am launching this poll, uh, which is a rookie thing to say because people who are doing this a while don't announce that they're launching the poll. They just launch the poll. Uh, but sometimes meta is magic. Here we go. Four names. You will choose just one. Wait, it's a weird poll though, right? Oh, no, there it is. It's okay, Steph. I, I got what you I got what you said. I'm already I'm panicking about everything right now. I know, but your Sorry. teeth are fine, so that's all that we give a shit about. That's all that matters: purple and teeth. Everybody should vote. There's 36 people here, minus a couple of us. That's it. Everybody, please vote. Thank you, Kurt. All right, I'm doing these polls like 40 seconds. That's five more seconds. Most people have voted. A lot of people. <laughs> Corey, never. Poll is over. Good job, y'all. Let's move on to section number three, another four storytellers. Just a real quick question, uh, Steph, because you were involved in this sort of super short story world, right? Yeah. I like, what do you think is the key thing for people to tell a kick-ass 90, 99 second story? Is there one thing that you think is like the thing? I put there's you on the spot two, here. There's two things. There's two, only two things and it's humor and vulnerability. And I mean, then maybe okay. three things. How about a, how about a twist, an ending that's a twist? When you lean heavy on there's only two things, I can't buy the third thing. There's said, only things. two things. There's only two things, this and this. Oh, and maybe a third thing. Yeah, okay. All right. The ending has to have a twist. Like, you you know, it's when somebody says, oh, the, uh, this story is about the time that the pian my brother dropped the piano on my mother. And then they tell you the story. So you have to be surprised at the end. Right. We all want I always think it. heart humor or surprise, if done well, could get you some votes. Not that it's all about votes, but this is a slam. So for our purposes, it is. Um, by all means, continue to communicate to the tellers and other people in the chat. That is a, the best way for now. Let's move on. Because remember, after this whole part, we have another round of the winners and plus two. Our next storyteller from Vegas. He is not math challenged. Richard Munchkin. Let me spotlight you, Richard. Hang on, I can't find you. There sure. you are. Sure. Right. Whenever you are ready, sir. Boom. I'm in Moscow, 2001, and someone has given me a gift of this very fancy travel alarm clock, but there's no batteries. So I go down out of my hotel and I cross the street and there's a small convenience store. And I go in and I'm looking around for batteries and I don't see any. So there are two older men behind the counter and I say, do you have any batteries? And they look at each other, kind of shrug. And I go, you know, batteries, batteries? Like most Americans, if you say it over again, suddenly they're going to understand English, but they don't get it. So I'm thinking like, well, what, what takes batteries that I can describe so they'll understand? So I think like a flashlight, you know? So I'm trying to describe a flashlight, like you unscrew it and you put the batteries inside. And one of the guys looks at the other and they say something in Russian and the guy goes, oh, you know, and now he comes back and he gives me a jar of pickles. And so I said, no, 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 do you have a pencil and paper? And so they give me that. And now I draw my best version of a triple A battery. 
and they look at it and they they kind of scratch their head and then i see the light bulb go off and one of the guys says something to the other and they talk in russian and he goes yeah and he goes behind the counter and he comes back with a box of condoms now i never got any batteries in that store but if you're ever in moscow and you need either a jar of pickles or a box of com condoms i have the drawing for you <laughs> boom boom <laughs> richard munchkin las vegas nevada good job richard uh yes i have a question oh uh, by the way for those people who might have come on late and told a story there's at least two of you uh there's a second round some of you will go on to a second round which means another different story so if that's maybe you if you're feeling confident and you don't have a second story you have about 20 minutes to get your shit together okay let us move on Storyteller number two of this section. You guys are crushing it. I am not surprised. This is fantastic. So thanks for being here, both tellers and audience. Next teller is live from Chicago, Maria Morris. Where is she? Maria, where are you? If we can't find Maria. I'm right here. Uh, awkward moments, awkward Zoom moments. I'm right here. There you go. Take your time whenever you're ready. Wait, let me start my own clock here. Okay. I never believed in the death penalty until my in-laws moved in with us last December. We're out of money. We have no other options, my mother-in-law told me on the phone. How can you be broke? You just took us to Alaska on a cruise. She's like, well, where do you think the money went? Well, it all went to you. This is one of the most entitled people you've ever met. The valet parking stand at Neiman Marcus in Boca Raton has built a monument in her honor now that she's left. But my father-in-law said, we're 100% independent. You guys don't need to do anything for us. We just need a roof over our heads. By January, they're here. I call them the house plants. They're independent, unless you consider using stairs to be not independent or using pots and pans to cook or taking the garbage out. They can't do these things. They can't open a fucking jar of pickles. And as of April, they can't drive anymore. It all came to a head right after lockdown. I was exhausted from all the extra housework. I'm mad at myself for allowing this to happen. And my mother-in-law says to me, Maria, why aren't you putting my Diet Coke in the refrigerator? I snapped. I said, you have to move out. So we can't move out. You have to move out. I had blood running through my veins about 80 degrees Fahrenheit below. Fucking furious. But I did the research. They had nowhere to go. And then what happens? October 29th, the woman faints in front of me. She has COVID. I take her to the hospital. She's sick. She's getting sicker. It's unsure what's going to happen. I'm like the fucking Grinch. I feel bad. I care. I don't want to be responsible for her death or anyone else's death. No more death penalty. I'm sorry I even thought it. Boom. Wow. Boom. Holy shit, man. Venom. All right. Yeah. I am not saying anything to anyone because I, I have been on at slams where People, the, the host will say something and I feel like it's leading the audience in some way. I stand against those practices. Uh, I'm glad to engage with you, ask you how you are or where you are. I will not show any favoritism. I think everybody's almost equal. All right, here we go. Number three, section, uh, section three, number three. And I'm not blowing smoke up, uh, up anyone's ass here. You guys really are doing a beautiful job. So that's great. Thank you for that. Uh, check out the chat when you have a moment. I know you have to listen to all these stories, but there's some love coming through and people are asking stuff. Our third storyteller of this section in Boston, Julie F. Baker. Let me find you, Julie. Yeah, the quilt helps so much. Thank you. I was 19 when I met Heidi. She was a beautiful badass, totally fearless. And I wanted to be just like her. 
She kind of liked the admiration and she loved introducing me to new things. She brought me to the G Fox makeup counter and we had them put on like a hundred dollars worth of expensive makeup and then didn't buy anything and went out dancing. We went to a nude beach for the first time and I discovered the importance of a high SPF. We went to the Ponderosa buffet at breakfast time and paid only $3.95 and stayed all the way through lunch. So Heidi was my everything. She said yes to life. One day we're hanging out and she tells me that Dave's coming over. I said, but you broke up with Dave. She said, yeah. I said, well, are you getting back together? She said, oh no, he's just really, really good in bed and I need to get laid. Now I was not surprised by this. Heidi embraced casual sex with no apologies. Not me. I had to call somebody my boyfriend in order to have a good time. But Heidi once seduced a repairman who came over to fix a typewriter. I said to her, are you going to see him again? She said, well, I guess if my typewriter breaks. So when Dave was coming over to get laid, I was a little bit jealous. And I said, well, I guess I'll go. She said, or you could stay. I said, what are you talking about? She said, a threesome. I said, Heidi, we'd be naked in front of each other. She said, we've been naked in front of each other. And you know, I don't have to touch you if you don't want, but you could touch me if you want. And I thought, I wanna be a badass. I wanna say yes to life. Dave shows up and they look at each other and he's really happy and they kiss. And then they look at me and I realize I'm not a badass. Boom. Good job, Julie. Great stuff this evening. There is something in the water in Boston. We have all agreed on that, right? Chicago, Boston, oh, yeah. certain cities uh, just seem to produce, a lot. there's just a lot of tellers here. Like our champion, uh, Vla the, the Grand Slam champion, I don't think is here tonight, is also in Boston, right? Mm -hmm. Jackson, Boston. A little disappointing that he's not here. I don't want to make him feel shitty. I don't know why not everybody in the world is not prioritizing this event and okay. only this event in our lives. You think? You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, here we go. Last storyteller of section number three, round one. I sound like a cyborg. Here we go. Live from Shocker, Massachusetts. Again, it's Andrew Shelfo. Where's, where's Mr. Shelfo? There he is. I don't know, because I was a, just a kid, if Ronnie was a bully or just a jerk. I did know that whenever he was around the neighborhood, things were not as much fun as when he wasn't around. When he was there, he would make fun of us and he would threaten to beat us up and it was just a total drag. Once when I was 12 years old, I was walking to the candy store with my best friend, John. And I was really excited because uh, it was the first time I've been able to walk in eight weeks because I just had double knee surgery and the doctor had just given me clearance to go walk without crutches or braces. And as we're walking to the candy store, we run into Ronnie and he walks with us for a while and then he starts talking and then out of nowhere, he hip checks me hard and I fall into the gutter in agony. Thankfully, nothing was broken, but that was Ronnie. He walked away laughing, typical Ronnie. Ronnie died in 9-11. But here's the thing. He wasn't the only kid from my neighborhood to die in 9-11. One of my really close friends, Chris, died in 9-11 as well. And Chris was the antithesis of Ronnie. He was generous to a fault. He loved everyone. He always rooted for the underdog. And he was the one that got Ronnie that job in the World Trade Center because he'd heard that Ronnie was down on his luck. So he got him a job. When I found out that both of them died, I worried that some people would think that because they died the same way that they were the same person. I don't know how karma works, but I know that no one deserves to die that way. But I know that some people deserve to die that way less than others. Mm. I know what Chris would say. He would say, don't worry about it. And he's probably right. But I guess what I've learned is remembering and forgetting are sometimes just as difficult. Boom. Good job, Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. All right, good job. Sorry for the pause. Steph, uh, send me any information that I need. Mary, hang on one second. We have, Steph, how many, show me Andrew's info. We have at least two tellers who were way over. I know, Fuck, I tried to cheat. I tried, I tried, but I, I, 
I couldn't find, I, I was texting you saying two people are over and then you, you knew, I said two people might have been over and you said, yeah, they were over. And I think you know the time like without even checking the clock somehow, Sean. Well, we confirmed. So they were two over. So Mary, we only need summary of two people. Uh, and, and I just want to confirm that. Uh, I apologize for this awkward inner working stuff, Steph, but uh, Andrew, I assume was under time. Andrew was fine. Okay, so we only need Andrew and uh, Richard. Unfortunately, Ma Maria and Julie were significantly over. Sorry, ladies. Uh, I know it sucks, but we got to be fair. What do you got for those two? Sure. So Richard uh, never got his batteries in Moscow, but did get a jar of pickles and a box of condoms from his drawing. And Andrew talking about remembering and forgetting is just as difficult and his two friends who passed in 9-11. Cool. All right. I do feel shitty that we have to do it that way, but I don't know, just gotta be fair. All right, let me launch this poll. It is obviously with two people. I will launch it and give you the same amount of time we have uh, before, let's say about 40 seconds or so. We got, so let's get at least 30 people to vote because uh, we have 36 total. These are really good stories. Even the ones that went over a little bit, they may not, they can't qualify, but they're really solid stuff. So thank you all for prepping uh, and for uh, telling these stories. All right, give it uh, 10 more seconds. All right. I believe we are going to close that poll. Good. This is our last uh, round. We've got five names. That does mean that it's a little bit harder for you, admittedly, but it's arbitrary. And if you really want to get angry, get angry at Daryl or Johanna because they came in late. Sorry, you guys. That's, I never want to take responsibility. I just want to deflect it on all of you. After this, we will have a quick break. We will announce who's going through. We'll have a little break so you can get a drink or go to the bathroom or do whatever you want to do. A couple of brief announcements and then we'll do our second round. I want to keep it going fast. There's a lot of stories. Um, and I've just realized, is Andrew still spotlighted? Awkward. All right, here we go. The beginning. Now you five, you know what's coming. You have been patient. I appreciate that. Our next storyteller, live and fierce in Arizona. Mary Jo Pollock. Let me spotlight you, Mary Jo. Take your time. No, Mom. I don't want to go to that party. Why not? Oh, she invited all the cutest boys in school, the most popular boys. I, I don't want to go. No, you're going. I don't know how to dance. No problem. Every day after school for the next two weeks, I had dance lessons. The day of the party finally arrived and it's 1960. I'm 12 years old. It's the end of sixth grade before we go to junior high. The day of the party arrives, I get dressed in my costume, it's a beatnik party. So I'm dressed head to toe in black. And then my mom does some Connie Stevens kind of eye makeup and white lipstick. She gave me a cigarette holder to complete my costume. Although there was no cigarette in it. I mean, I was 12 years old. I went to the party. The boys were on one side of the room, the girls were on the other. I was hanging out in the back of the pack, feeling very awkward and self-conscious. These were the most popular boys in school and the cutest boys in school. And I'm just kind of observing everything. And I look up and I see Mark Rosenberg, the cutest boy in school who I've had a crush on since second grade, walking over, and he asked me to dance. Boom. Boom. John Mary Joe in Tucson, Arizona, rocking that chair with a little attitude. Ha. Good. All right. Let's keep it moving because we do have a second round. Good job. 
our second story of second storyteller of this final section. I don't know this man. He seems like a nice guy, Jeremy. Uh, let me find you, sir. I know he's got a great haircut. That I know for shit sure. Take your time. My aunt used to call my dad a Pollyanna. She said that there wasn't a cloud in the sky that he didn't find a silver lining in. He could find the bright side of anything, <clears throat> even cancer. I would go down and see him every month after he was diagnosed and ask him how he was holding up. And he always responded the same with a big grin on his face. Well, I'm still buying green bananas, he'd say. I was happy to see that he was keeping his sense of humor. I just wished it would have been better to begin with. Two years later, and it was clear that the chemo hadn't worked. The surgeries had been a failure and the stomach cancer had metastasized to the rest of his organs. The prognosis was death. It was just a matter of if, or when, not if. I spent some time with him. We talked about his life, his regrets, what he wanted me to do for his wife to support her after he passed. And I told him all the things that he'd done to help me understand what a good man was just by showing what a good man looked like. When the phone rang and I saw his name popped up, I answered it immediately. I could see his grin through FaceTime when I asked him how he was doing and he said, well, decided I'm not buying green bananas anymore. And so I packed my bags and went down to be with him when he died. Boom. Thank you, Jeremy. Appreciate you sharing that. Good. All right. Jeremy, by the way, where are you? Seattle. Oh, Seattle. All right. You know, friend of Melissa's or is that random? That's random, although we're friends now since we're uh, sharing this experience. <laughs> wow. That's a little wink, wink. I don't want to. Okay. Hey, hey. All right. Hello, Melissa's, bl Melissa's blushing. <laughs> I can't actually see her, but it's, there's some blushing. Okay. Maybe we awkwardly... should spawn. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. All right. Again, no one usurps my authority. No, I'm just playing. All right. Here we go. Uh, by the way, Mary is doing such a good job summarizing, I think. Oh, thanks, love. And Steph is doing a great job timekeeping. Woo, she is. And it's also not an easy job. Neither of them are, but I mean, there's a lot of hate being spewed towards you right now, Steph, and you're handling it so gracefully. And we're all so proud of you for figuring out how to use the pole, Sean. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. I can't get away with these good looks. I, I need more than just this handsome face. Our next storyteller, uh, it, live from North Carolina, another local, Kat Dean. Give it up. I'm going to time myself so I don't need the warning if you don't want to do it. All right. Steph, you've been warned. She doesn't want the warning. Yeah. <laughs> Stay away. Yeah. All right. I'm standing at the front of my uh, French class after my final exam, which was a, a speech I would write and deliver. And the exam had not gone well. Everybody in class is laughing except the professor who looks kind of pissed. And finally, she speaks and says, you have confused the word champignon with the word champion. A champignon is a mushroom, which totally explained why everybody was laughing because my speech about a skiing champion had essentially been about a skiing mushroom. And I walked back to my desk, really humiliated with this cloud of anger over my head and daring anyone with my eyes to say one word. And nobody did for two days. And then a young man walked up to me on campus and said to me in a French accent, are you the girl who did the speech about the skiing mushroom? My roommate said it was so funny. Would you tell it to me? And I'm just about to tell this foreign exchange student where he can go and what he can do when he gets there. When it dawns on me that he, every day he communicates in a foreign language and risks making a fool of himself. So I decide I'll go for it. And I, I give him my speech with champignon du ski, il dit swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. And I do the motions and he laughs still, is just holding his stomach. 
And he says, you have such a good accent, you could pass for a French girl if you weren't saying stupid things, which I know he must have meant in the best way. And you know what? Nobody was trying to humiliate me. I did that to myself. They were just laughing at a good story. Thank you, Cap. French mushroom. We are almost we are almost done with uh, round one. Again, after after our final final teller tells, then uh, we will get the information. We have the four winners from those sections, and then two, one from Steph, one from Mary. They get to say uh, who they who they like. So there'll be six going to the second round. Take a little break, and then we'll do our last round, and then we'll have a champion. And we will have a few more of these, by the way. And then there'll be a grand slam. And then maybe one day there'll be a grand slam of the grand slam. We'll call it a grand grand slam. Enough. I'm feeling weird. Here we go. Uh, second to last teller. Here we go. Live from, I believe, Dallas, Texas, home of the Cowboys. He probably doesn't want to talk about that this year. Where are you, Mike? There you are. Yep, I hear you, bro. All right. Not the time for the Cowboys. This is about you. From a rickety old treehouse near heaven, I watched as you shaved away inhibitions with the precision of a surgeon, but you were no virgin to perversion. That night, you'd be wearing women's clothes again. So smooth and subtle, you removed stubble in your struggle to transform from king to queen. And I watched as you came out of that closet wearing a skin-tight sequined mini, capturing those skinny legs just so. Your makeup flawless, earrings blinging, looking like RuPaul in drag. Oh, you thought you were America's next top model. And I can still see all those strangers, one of many more than willing to deliver prophylactics at your revolving back door. Sat up in that tree like a rotting piece of fruit, watching as the cable guy laid pipe. The plumber plugged leaks and the postman always came twice. That's where I learned to count. You see, that was Sesame Street for me. And the worst moment of my life was seeing another man between your thighs, but shh, I'll never tell daddy. No one need never know what I saw you so. I'll never tell, sir. I'll never tell. But you tell me. Why want you a father to your son who's still waiting for one? I'm still waiting, Daddy. And all I know, all I'll ever know, is that I'll never climb trees again. Thank you, Mike. Good job, bro. Oh, I do not. I don't. We're not going to hear Mike when Dallas has a good season. Because that that would be crazy. Imagine that. Um, all right, cool. Last teller is. Uh, you know who you are. The last teller is the only teller of the evening who has had a little time to wait. Uh, it's a math thing. See that, Richard? You see what I did there? So after this one, we're going to do that poll. And that's that. All right, cool. Obviously, our last teller, you don't all know this, but he knows it. Live from Chicago, one of our first timers. Uh, is Jeff Stein. Jeff, what's up, man? Break Howdy. a leg. So my best friend's son has just turned six years old. And I'm at this birthday party at Chuck E. Cheese. I am bored out of my mind. When all of a sudden, I feel like something tug at my leg. And there's like a little kid down there. And he looks up at me and he says, Mr. Why are you so fat? Now his father, who is standing right behind him, does absolutely nothing. So I look at the kid, I look down at him, look him straight in the eye, and I say, I eat small children. Have you ever seen one of those cartoons where the eyes pop out of the head and the eyes pop back in the head? Well, that's what happened. His eyes popped out of his head, popped back in. He yelled, ah, and he ran right across the floor like it was Black Friday, followed by his now very, very unhappy father. I wish I could tell you that stuff like this doesn't happen to me on a regular basis, but it does. I was annoyed. I was upset. 
Is this how it's always going to be for people who aren't the same size as everyone else? Until the father walked up to me afterwards and he said to me, I'm sorry. I really just didn't know what to say. Boom. Boom. Thanks, Jeff. Final teller of round one. Steph will message me <clears throat> with anybody that was too far over to be considered. And then Mary will do our uh, uh, summaries and we will have a winner of this section. And then we'll take a few minutes and decide on the other two. And there's a couple of announcements. And it's also an opportunity at that point for those who have told a story to very briefly unmute themselves, not just yet, and do a little plugging of their own, but not just yet. All right, Mary, are you ready to summarize all five? I'm all ready, cool. I am. So MJ had her crush from second grade when she was 12, year old, 12 years old, ask her to the dance she didn't want to go to. Jeremy um, never is going to look at green bananas the same way again and talking to his dad when he was battling cancer. Kat, who talked about a skiing mushroom. <laughs> Mike, who uh, is keeping dad's secret. And Jeff, who taught a father and a child that not everyone is the same size and to be kind. All right, I will send this poll out in just a moment. Same deal. I don't want to jinx it, but it has thus far totally worked. And it's really basic technology that to me, it's astounding it's working, but it's really from like 14 years ago. Listen, do not jinx the polling gods because I don't want to count. For, for real, because yes, right? you've been doing a lot of counting in the past. It right. looks like we're good. I'll keep this up for the same amount of time. A little bit longer because there are five people and i am i am acknowledging you five had a bit tougher uh, go because of uh, the numbers i'm launching the poll now this is really close so everybody please vote All right, we got about 20 more seconds. Vote away. I would love to hear after if anybody, not now, but after, if did anybody vote for someone else that was a teller? Love to know that. Yeah, this is a tough one. All right, we're at 45 seconds. Same amount as the others. Let's end this poll. Let us take about four or five minutes while uh, we chat with you. First of all, great job. Everyone did really, really lovely, beautiful. Those stories, I think, in many ways are harder than five or seven minute stories. They're different, obviously, but it is tough. So great job. Uh, Steph and Mary, we will chat a little bit in the messenger thread. While we do that, of the, uh, what was it? My uh, 17 tellers, that is the magic number for some reason. Uh, if any of the 17 tellers, let me un, has something they want to plug, or if your name is Erin in Ontario, unmute yourself and please, like super brief, we want to hear about it, but don't bore us. Same as the 99. I'll give you a couple minutes to do that because we do want to support you as best we can. Do you mind if I go? Go ahead, Erin. Yeah, Aaron, sure. Ontario. Hi everyone. Um, so this has been an amazing night and uh, my lovely friend Brune, also from Toronto, has a wonderful show coming up in December. I'm going to put a link in the chat. She's looking for pitches. Pitcher, it's such a great show. And uh, the theme for this time is DNA. So I'll put that information in the chat. Pitch, pitch, pitch. I want to hear more of your stories. You're all so good. Cool. Anyone else? We've got 50, you got, we got a lot of people who are on telling stories and shows. Some of you are producing shows. Don't be, don't be shy. Please tell us. I, I, I'll, I'll plug some stuff too, but I want to give you the floor too. Hey, Joanna. I'm too, I host Boulder Story Slam and we're doing a, a 
special event, a race themed story. So, which actually we're worked, I'm leading an eight week workshop for a mixed race group of people to dig into stories around race. And then we'll be, so it won't be a competitive slam at the end, but everybody will tell a story. We've done it once and it was incredibly powerful and we're doing it again. So if you or anyone you know want to jump into that, it'd be great to have you. Thank you for that. Hey, Julie, thank you for raising your hand. Julie Baker. I co-produce a show called Now Listen Here, and we've decided we're going to host virtual themed non-competitive open mics on the third Friday of every month until we are allowed back in person. So follow us on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. We also post uh, somewhat daily story prompts to come up with ideas for stories. Cool. Yeah. And Melissa Reeves. Yay. Hi. This is so much fun. I just love yeah, it. Yeah. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Yeah. So oh. I'm in a show on the 7th. It's out of LA called The Otter House. Um, it's a holiday show. So I'll be telling my story. Uh, Matthew Dix is going to be in the show. There's a whole bunch of, I don't know this group that well, but I was in one not too long ago and loved it. Um, and then I also uh, produce a show called Melanin Stories Matter. And we've done three shows. So Johanna, it might be interesting to talk because I have quite a few um, storytellers that were pretty phenomenal. Um, and we're going to be bringing back a lot of these, uh, a lot of these shows in 2021 um, so that we can amplify the voices of black, indigenous and people of color so that we can hear their stories and end racism. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not laughing at that. I just was unexpectedly sit by. Wow. It's my mission. I just didn't. Yep. Uh, anyone else? You got another minute or so. I know uh, we don't want it to be a plug fest, but I do want to uh, give you a moment to Can I go? share the stuff that you're doing. Yes. Hi. Um, so on the topic of uh, ending racism and amplifying the voices of BIPOC, um, I have a blog. It's pumpkinspicelusty.com. I will put the link in the chat. It is a lot of things i recently was talking to my partner about how i'm gonna start calling myself a cultural critic instead of calling myself unemployed um so it's mostly about my experiences as a south asian american woman and um yeah if you want to go check it out i'll put the link in the chat and if you want to maybe change the fact that i am unemployed and still don't have money and still have to look on craigslist for my furniture i'll also put my cash app in the chat so thank you Yep. Thank you, Fatima. The only body slammer here, I think, officially. And she just shut a video off, which is essentially in Zoom language, like go F yourself. I know it's okay. It's fine. Anyone else before I plug a real quick thing about uh, events we have, and then we'll move on to round two. All right. I figured if you got something, you've been, I've been doing this for like three and a half to four minutes. It would have been on the tip of your tongue. I'm just going, I'm going to put one link in the chat because I know there's just a lot of links and links and links. It's just to the group. It's called Grit, True Stories That Matter. Everything's there about events, any future classes, the podcast. Kurt's here tonight as in the audience. We do a podcast called Grit, True Stories That Matter. We're doing our seventh episode this week, right, Kurt? And uh, it's going well. So I'm glad about that. So that link is here. Without further ado, let us, uh, I, I hope that everybody has gone to the bathroom, uh, gotten a drink, done whatever you needed to do. No. Oh, and, uh, and also, wait, who hasn't? We were talking, <laughs> so I stayed. Oh, it's you are, uh, okay. It's all good. Is there a yeah, go meeting? now. Okay. Give me two uh, minutes. I got to talk to the spawn. She's out there. Hang on. Well, you know what? We'll, we'll totally, we'll stop the entire show for you. That's fine. All right, forget it now. Fine. Uh, fine. No, I'm just kidding. No, Steph, you okay. have an announcement, no, right? It's, I'm just playing. It's fine. Steph, yeah, um, between rounds. Yes. Steph, you have a uh, obviously stuff going on. Share what you've got. Wait, someone just had a question though first. Oh, sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. You said there's a break between rounds, right? This was it. Oh, you didn't announce it. You didn't really announce a break. Oh, yeah, hang on. Let me go back. Hang on. Hang on. That was, was not break. a break. Hang on. <laughs> Real, like, we will give you uh, another three and a half minutes to get food, drink, toilet officially. While we're doing that, uh, Steph will, you have got a lot of time to fill, Steph. So you've got it. 
<laughs> should I tell a few stories? I, I just um, wanted to- Story jam. I want to plug the show, a show, a thing we're doing on Sunday. Next Sunday, if you guys are familiar with Ray Christian, the storyteller, mm -hmm. he's an actor, storyteller, professor, um, veteran. He is going to be uh, speaking to us and it's just pay what you can. Everybody's welcome to come. If you go to storyjamshow.com, sorry, storyjamstudio.com, I'll put it in the link. It's next Sunday afternoon. He's going to be speaking about BIPOC voices in storytelling and how allies can best support BIPOC voices. And then he's also going to be telling some of his awesome stories. So yeah, and and Melissa had him at a recent show and yep. Melissa loves him. Everybody know, who knows Ray loves Ray. He's really, really, really- His special. podcast is- What's race? You gotta listen to it. So good. There's no promoting other podcasts. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, sorry. Steph's, no, no, no. I'm just playing. Steph's got a great podcast because Steph's stuff is really story and original music, so it's a very unique angle. You, Sean. Yeah, we right. usually do music, but we're not really. We're just doing it in the podcast right now. And yeah, but that's I your thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So good. So thank you, uh, Sean. And and what's race podcast? I I I'd like to hear more. What's race? Okay. So he's a um, stuff or just time meeting. Okay. Yeah. We'll have time after. Um, we'll have time after. Just remember, it's all good. History. He, the black history. So good. Okay. What I'm going to do in uh, two minutes is and give you six names. Uh, four of those are the winners by the audience poll, and two of them were uh, sort of wild card, so to speak, choices from our judges. Uh, they are very interesting names. They are names that are, uh, there's, there's a name with one syllable uh, and two, it, it, uh, different time zones. How much can, can I milk this for another minute? You better because a lot of people yeah. left to go to the bathroom and things. That should so. be a condition of, yeah. <laughs> Wait till the break is over before you announce them. I will, of course, don't worry. Don't piss me off in this minute either because I'll just nix your asses. I have such power here, guys. You have no idea. You are the most wonderful host I have ever uh, participated. <laughs> that's great. I love Wait it. a minute. I you think that's a fair. I think that's a fair okay. assessment. That's a fair assessment. Did uh, the cookies come? Cookies Did you get them? <laughs> Too late. The votes are already in, people. Yeah. Too late. The oh. votes are in. The decisions have been made. There are some surprises. They're all good though, because um, hey, and we will have more of these. So whether uh, you know, you like this. And you want to can uh, we repeat stories you may not repeat a story why because you need two different stories bob dancer said i should be able to repeat stories do you see bob here is that why he's not here <laughs> he's not here no i'm just kidding uh he had another engagement but uh you may not repeat a story two two stories i've been saying this for weeks if you're not paying attention sorry always moving forward any teller or audience member who may want to tell a story, you will need, unless the format changes, two stories. One is your first story like you all just heard, and then if you move on. It is 8.20. Uh, let us be respectful of people's times and announce the names in no particular order. The names, the people going to the second round are Jeff in Chicago, Andrew somewhere in Massachusetts, Johanna somewhere, I think in Colorado, but I'm not sure. Melissa in Seattle. Mike in Dallas. Jeremy, I think somewhere I'm not, I don't recall. It's also Seattle. I think we have two people from the state of Washington here. Interesting. Yeah. I have never had that before. Those are your six finalists. Please everybody stay. We'll start in like a minute. Those six people have a second story, same jam. This time, they're all going to go. I'll pick the names. I'll put the poll up. So we sorry. I have a winner. Got, I just got back. Can you say the names again? So sorry. The names are Jeremy, Mike, <laughs> Melissa, Johanna, Andrew, and Jeff. Okay, thanks. You guys did very well. And truly, there's no absolutely perfect way to do this. Some of it's chance, the group you happen to be in. It, there's just no way. So... Afterwards, not now, I am always open to, uh, to feedback to try to tighten this up. We've been improving it as we, get, as, we, as we move on. It's a little tricky. 
So uh, once I get these uh, six names back in the Peruvian hat and I uh, can make sure I can find them all to start again. Steph, I don't know if you've left. This would have been a good time for music, don't you think? It really would have been a good time for that one thing you mentioned that we weren't allowed to do. This the would belly be dance? The belly yeah. dancing thing? It was something else. Can't, can't say it live. Oh, Elena that's Beth. the way to that's the way to create some surprise here. I'm die. What? Wow. Nice stuff. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? The no <laughs> masturbation rule. Oh, the no masturbation rule. Julie, <laughs> really do the glass dildo. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking the same thing. All right. So once again, uh, if you hear your name, please get ready because I'm putting your names back in the hat one last God. time. J Jeremy. My second story. Jeremy. Jeff, Mike, Melissa, Andrew, and Joanna. And it's cool. It worked out the way it worked out, but a um, lot of new people and, 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 and new names, uh, whether, whether they went to the second round or not. It's, I'm, I'm thrilled that you're here and you're participating. And the goal is to grow the community, not just the 99 second. Um, this is one, one little bubble in that world. So I'm glad to be a part of it and to do whatever. Here we go. Storyteller number one of round two. Everybody's going to get a vote. Go fucking figure. Once again, it's Melissa Reeves. That's weird, Melissa. You keep going first. Thanks, John. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> mm. okay. It's 1994, and I'm in Hawaii on my honeymoon, and I've just married the love of my life, Kenny. And we're so in love, and we're so excited because we're going to walk through life hand in hand. And we're in Hawaii at a luau and it's amazing. There's like this amazing pork and purple potatoes and we're sitting around with strangers and they're great. And we meet this one couple and they're on their 30th wedding anniversary and they're really corny. They're like, hi, I'm Mel and I'm Sue and we're the Johnsons. <laughs> and we notice that Mel doesn't have a hand. It's just like this little nub that he has and it's conversation. It's kind of their shtick and we get through it. It's all good. Next day. I gotta get more of that pig. And we go back to the luau, but this time it's all different people. And we're sitting around with totally new table mates. And Kenny says, guy doesn't have a hand. What, 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 what? He doesn't have a hand, what? Oh, oh, he doesn't have a hand. Oh my God, that's so weird. That, you know, you know that spiritual messages come in threes. Where, where's another person that doesn't have a hand? What are they trying to tell us? He's like, I don't know. 20 years pass. And just like the waves crashing on the beach, our marriage has receded. And we're sitting at a park bench. And he says, so are we done? Yeah, we're done. We stand up, a woman walks out of the public bathroom and she doesn't have a hand. That's three. We walk away single-handed towards divorce. Melissa Reeves, in or at least near Seattle, Washington. Sammamish. <laughs> it's not really important. No, Sammamish, Washington. Yeah. Is my nope. See, close, I think near Seattle works as well. It's fine. Good job. Thanks. Round two, teller number one. It was also our round one teller number one. We can't write this stuff. All right. Number uh, two. Here we go. Our second teller, round two, is, I can't see, I hope you can see this name in my camera because I'm Andrew Shuffle. Andrew, let me find you. Uh, where are you, you handsome man? Up oh, there, it got awkward again. Here we go. <coughs> okay. You're good, man. Whenever. I'm seven years old and it's a Saturday morning and I'm engaging my Saturday ritual, which is to get up early, go downstairs in the basement and watch cartoons before anybody else in my family gets up. But I'm interrupted by a knock at the door. So I go upstairs and I open up the door and it's Mr. Hochberg, our neighbor from two doors down, and he doesn't look very happy. He tells me that one of my brothers, my older brothers, left some beer bottles on his front lawn and he wants them cleaned up immediately. Well, I have to decide to wake up my brothers or help Mr. Hochberg. So I go out the door with Mr. Hochberg in my tidy whiteies to go pick up the beer cans off of his front lawn. And when I get back home and I tell my, my family about the early morning visitor, they're not happy. My father goes and talks to Mr. Hochberg. My brothers are upset. My parents say, you know what? Just, just avoid him. Don't, 
don't get them all riled up again. So that's what I do. A few years later, at our annual 4th of July block party, which Mr. Hawkbird and his family never come to because they're always out of town, a group of friends and I were kind of wandering around and then we, we walked past Mr. Hawkbird's house and we noticed that the awning on his porch is smoldering. And I get worried because I'm sure he's going to blame me for it. So I go over and I tell my father. My father comes over and he takes a hose from Mr. Hawkbird's yard and he just puts the fire out. And he never says anything about it to anybody. And he taught me something about being a neighbor that day. I was embarrassed. I hated that guy. He interrupted my cartoons. He marched me through the neighborhood. He dissed my family. But my father said, you know what? That's okay. But I still like to think that Mr. Hawkbird had to explain more than once why I was walking down the street on a Saturday morning with a seven-year-old in tidy whities Boom. <laughs> Andrew. <laughs> Andrew, was that laughter coming from your home? No, that was coming from somebody else. Ah, this is why we must mute because we are giving favoritism and we must oh. not. No, that's cool. Laughter and clapping and hands are all good. Andrew Shelfo, uh, somewhere in Massachusetts, uh, is probably enough for us, I think. Yeah? Cool. Let me remove you. Good job. Uh, great stuff. So we have a total of six in the second round. Uh, Melissa was first. Andrew was second. They've been doing this uh, 99 thing for a little bit. Our third storyteller, Johanna, uh, I'm guessing has been doing this for quite some time, but is new to this little bubble. Let me find you, Joanna. Where are you? There you are. Storyteller number three, second round, break a leg. Wait, 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 wait. I got to time myself. This is You're good. all good. You're all good. Okay. Okay. I'm on a speedboat in the middle of a lake in Michigan at the family reunion. My sister and my four-year-old niece are being pulled on a tube. My nephew is bouncing all over the boat. I'm pretty sure one of those kids is gonna go under and I'm gonna to have to jump in and save the day. And I'm ready. And my secret is I want something to happen. It's the family reunion and I've showed up once again without a husband and without a kid and without a job and my mother is pissed. So I wanna be the hero, I wanna save the day. And nothing happens. So later that night, we're on the dock, it's happy hour, it's lovely, and we see this duck quacking and flapping and sm against this, this boat post. And we're like, what's going on? And I see that the duck is caught on a fish hook and, and, and a fishing line and flapping against this post. And everybody covers their face and turns away and says, I can't look, I can't look. But I, I go towards the duck. I whip off my sweatshirt, I jump in the water, I swim to the duck, I get there and I reach for his neck and I realize I can kill this duck in this moment with my hand. So I grab his beak and I'm tre treading water and I'm gulping water and my dress is heavy. I grab his beak and I yank the hook and I yank it and I yank it and I can't get it out. I yank it and I yank it and I finally get the hook out and I release the duck and I swim back to the dock and everybody screams, Joe, Joe, you're our hero, you're our hero. And I jump back on the dock and the duck swims around and we make eye contact and he, say th he says, thank you. And I say, no, no, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Joanna. And Boulder? Boulder, yes. Nice area, very nice area. I'm not playing favorites by saying, I think an area is nice. It's irrelevant to the story. It is a nice part of the country. Good job. Three tellers done, three to go. We're at 8.30. Uh, I think we're making pretty good time. Uh, so we'll just keep going. Number four. And by the way, thank you for sticking around, tellers and otherwise, because at your vote counts. If you know, you know what I'm saying. All right, uh, number four. Jeff, Stein, Chicago, Illinois home of the mediocre bears. Yes. Knock yourself out. My dad is in a rehab facility because he hasn't been feeling well lately. And I decided I'm going to go visit him. And when I get there, he's in the middle of physical therapy. And for some strange reason, he's just giving the physical therapist a hard time. He doesn't want to do it. He doesn't want to walk. He doesn't want to do anything. And normally this would be a problem, except that's my dad to a T. Always whining, always complaining. And I know this because I'm exactly like him. But I know he can do it because as he's told me, he's from the depression, you know, back when dinosaurs roamed the earth. So I know that he can do it. 
I'm like, dad, just do it. No, no, I can't, I can't, I can't. Dad, just, just do it, you can do it. No, I can't. Dad, just fucking do it. And he couldn't. And that, those are the last words I said to my dad. My dad had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, Cessner syndrome. He was only supposed to live for one year. He lived for 12. He was a strong guy. And my last words were, fuck it. I miss him. Boom. Thank you, Jeff. Chai Town. Good job, man. All right, we have got two tellers left. Like last time, we'll take a vote. Um, and just so we're all on the same page, we're, you're not losers if you don't win. No one's calling you losers. You are, what, is there a politically correct way uh, to say someone who hasn't won? It's 2020, we wanna be careful of people's- Winner feelings. challenged. Okay, so that's, that's what all of you are if you don't win. Winner challenged by according to Melissa, who's still blushing. It's been like 35 minutes. Okay, here we go. Second to last teller this evening. Mike in Dallas. Let me find you. Glad I'm newbies. I love it. There you are, sir. Give me one sec to spotlight you. Take your time. Boom. I could tell by that Make America Great Again bumper sticker that my neighbor loves her president. Always watching me, judging me. We couldn't stand each other. Well, we may have had our differences, but our pets could care less about politics. Every day, my dog anxiously waits for her little friend. And when she sees her, the excitement begins. Then what was once a battleground becomes common ground for my neighbor and I. And as we enjoy the energy of two animals bonding, we talk. Hi, my name is Brenda, and this is Cassie. My name is Mike, and this is Abby. We do this every day, and our friendship has grown. Three weeks ago, she asked me to please pray for her mom, Jean. Well, her mom passed shortly after casting her final ballot. Still, our routine continues. And whenever I run out of those doggy poo pickup bags, Brenda shares. And whenever she sees someone I don't know, I'm right there. We decided that our pet's friendship and ours were way more important than politics. God is a genius the way he brings people together at a time when they need each other the most. You know, when we first met, I thought, uh-oh, another one of those Karens. But it turns out deep down, she was just so caring. And this is how I love my neighbor. Good job. Thanks, Mike, in Texas. All right, a lot of love, a lot of hands. A lot of people hands are doing the Zoom hands thing. There's some uh, chat love uh, to all of the tellers this evening. And again, like uh, I believe it was Jeff last time, Jeremy is the only the second teller. I find this fascinating, but it's really not. Jeremy's the only other teller this evening that knew when he exactly when he was going to tell. There's probably a name for that in sociology or something, but I don't know what it is. Here we go. Uh, you know who you are, Jeremy. I will find you, our final storyteller. And again, fantastic job, everyone. There you are, sir, in Seattle. I was 35 years old when I found out I was racist. It came as a surprise to me, which is not how these things usually happen, I don't think. It was a warm fall day and I was standing in my driveway talking with four of my friends, four of my white friends. And I knew things were going to go south quickly when one of my buddies looked over his shoulder and then leaned into us and asked, if we wanted to hear a joke. 
things didn't get awkward when he used the N word. They got awkward when I stopped him and said I didn't want to hear it. There was some back and forth, some, come on, man, lighten up. It's just a joke. And some hard feelings when I walked in the house and shut my door. So the thing was, I'd known these guys since high school and it wasn't the first racist joke I'd heard by any means. But it was the first time that I'd had the courage to stand up and say, hey, I'm not okay with this. I'd somehow fooled myself into believing that because I didn't tell the jokes and I didn't use racial slurs, that I was better than them and part of the solution instead of the problem. These days I take a little bit of comfort from Maya Angelou when she said, do the best you can until you know better. Then when you know better, do better. Boom. Boom. Good way to cap off the night, Jeremy. Thank you, sir. Maybe we got to add Seattle to the list. We've got Boston water, Chicago, maybe in the water and Seattle. It's just producing talent is what it is. And Carolina, that's where I am. We got a few other tellers here from Carolina. That ain't bad either. All right, we had six tellers. I'm waiting for Steph. Really good job, y'all, to let me know if anyone was over time. And then we will have Mary do one final summary. We will vote. We will celebrate. Uh, and then uh, if you want to hang out with a little Q&A or chat, I would like that. I know everyone can't stay, uh, but I appreciate everyone being patient and being here. All right. So uh, we've got everybody is... Uh, Good to go, Mary. They all are under time. All right. So when you're ready, I'm ready to finish this poll and, and launch it. All right. So Melissa talked about the sign from the spirits that it was time for the divorce to happen. Andrew talked about Mr. Hockenberger, who ended up walking him down the street when he was seven years old in his tidy whities to clean up beer bottles, but his dad showed him to be a good neighbor. Joanna had a duck that saved her reputation at the family reunion. Jeff and his story about his dad and his last words to his dad as he was going through rehab and battling cancer. Mike uh, talking about how his dog and his neighbor's dog, even though she was a Trump supporter, helped them bond over those cute puppies. And Jeremy learned that he could do better. Good, all right. Give me about 15 seconds. I'm going to launch it. Killer, killer stories. Good I agree. Stories. Yeah, killer. All right, I just want to make sure that these descriptions are um, clear enough. All right, this should be it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Save it, launch it. Thank you, everyone, again for being here. And, um, I love that people are ripping on me. I just love it. Because it was a long time. In there. Hey, look, would you rather get no rippage ever? No one ever shows you any sort of attention or some shitty attention? I'll take the latter. I'll take they, the latter. They, they do care in their way. They right. Care. Sure. Okay. I seem to have figured out the poll and got it right for this entire evening. And your slam winner is, please pick one. This is close. I love the way these polls come in because it looks like it's like a horse race and it's like boom, 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 boom. Really close. Oh, yeah. Guys, make sure you vote. You must vote. I think we have a winner. We'll wait, we'll wait, we'll wait. Now, are we doing... Um... Mary, do you want to be the announcer? Do you not, yet, to, not yet, not yet, not yet. No, I'm not going to announce it yet, but when you tell me, I can do it if you want. I like your role as being the announcer of it. Thank you. Yes. Uh, let's give it uh, 15 more seconds. Looks like most people have voted. And again, not to uh, not to say it over again, but thank you for being here, whether you're audience or teller. And if this is your thing or you want to do more of these kinds of things, we'll have more. So if you're in the group, the Facebook group is probably the best place to sort of stay abreast of what's happening. And I put that in the link. Uh, that link in the chat a few times. Uh, that's the way to do it. So one person hasn't voted. It won't make a difference. Okay. 
Yeah. You're right. All right. All right. We have a winner and it's by, by yeah. a bit. By a bit. So Steph, thank you for being such a great timekeeper. Thank you. And uh, I put you on the spot. You weren't expecting that. You had a stressful job and Mary, good job summarizing and great job to our tellers and our audience Sunday evening, 8.42 PM, end of November. Mary, who was our winner? It was close. And then someone ran away from it at the end, but we got to give it up for our boy in Seattle, Jeremy. Seattle, Washington, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> You. Making the PW proud. That wow. Fantastic. Representing. All right. Good job, Jeremy. For the, for the record, though, and uh, just to kind of give a plug for Steph as well, I'm originally from the Chicago land area. So See? I don't know. Uh, kind of the best of both worlds that way. You got it. You got it both ways. Yep. Something in Chicago. Good job, everybody. Uh, really good job. Good stories. Good flow. Congrats, Jeremy. We'll, we'll connect. You got, your, you got a prize coming to you. So we will connect um, later tonight or tomorrow. I'm good for it. And uh, let's do a formal thanks and we're done. And you can sort of ease into the post chat Q and A if you want. I know we've been together for almost two hours. So I 100% if you're ready to get and skedaddle. But thanks everyone. Uh, I will announce soon when the next slam is and I hope to see you there. Bye. Thank you. So much fun. All right. Now Thank we're in you. Thank you guys. Good job, amazing Andrea. Stories, everybody. Amazing, amazing. Really good. Really good stories. Like I'm Steph, so Steph renamed herself Good Teeth, which I think is appropriate. <laughs> um, there are there was a lot of talent. There was a lot of smiling and good teeth. I noticed. <laughs> I just noticed that. Come on, Corey, flash those I, pearlies. I think that there was also <laughs> something to be said for the bald man this evening. Yeah. There is something to be said for the bald man. Outside Always of something. that, I've got nothing to say. So unmute yourselves. Don't all talk at once. And right. uh, so we'll wind it down. Congrats so again, Jeremy.